Posted on Facebook and YouTube on Sunday, and I know I look a little different including church today. Um, Pastor Eric is on vacation, even though he's here to do communion, since I'm not qualified for that entirely. Um, visitation for Leo Hardell is from 9 to 11 on Monday, and followed by service at 11. Um, communion, if you all grabbed it, is in the little basket containers, and there is more in your bulletin to read at your leisure and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ, seeking God's abundance, abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Now continue with the gathering song, page 776.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Spirit of God is gathering us together. The Good Shepherd is leading us onward. God, our Creator, made us to be together, to be one flock, one fold. The Good Shepherd is leading us onward. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is calling us by name, and we know their voice. The Good Shepherd is leading us onward. Come, gather your hearts in worship, and follow Christ our Lord. The Good Shepherd is leading us onward. O God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people. We may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I must will gather the remnants of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous ranch, branch, and he will reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which she will be called, the Lord of all righteousness, the Lord of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The, the Lord, Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, pastures and leads me beside still waters. waters. You restore my soul, o Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. When Jesus sends his disciples out to teach and heal, they minister among large numbers of people. Their work is motivated by Christ's desire to be among those in need. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that he, they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat in a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gensaret and moored the boat. When they had got out of the boat, people at once recognized him, and rushed about the whole region, and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, cities, or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch him, even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hello, now it's time for the kids, the big kids and the little kids. I won't say good morning or good evening because I don't know what time you're watching. <laughs> I have a question for you. I wonder if you have ever been really, really tired. Maybe you were up late because you had company or you were watching a movie and the next morning you had to get up for school or for church. Maybe you were on a long car ride and you didn't think you would ever, ever get there. Or maybe you were on a long walk or hike with your family 
and you wished your mom or dad would pick you up and carry you, but you were too big to be picked up. Well, you can imagine that, if you can imagine that, maybe you can think about how you felt at that time. Were you angry or frustrated? Did you, did you feel cross? Maybe you even cried. I hope none of you threw yourself on the floor and kicked your heels, but you might have felt like that. Now, you can imagine how Jesus and his friends might have felt in our story today. He and his disciples had been walking on the hot, dusty roads. They were sweaty, and they were dirty, and they were tired, and they'd had an interesting time. They'd been telling people about, about God's love. They had been healing people, but they were exhausted. And Jesus had an idea. He knew how his friends felt. He said, let's get into this boat and go to that park across the lake and we can rest and relax and maybe have something to eat. He knew they needed a break. So they got in the boat and it was a relief to feel that cool breeze, but pretty soon they arrived at the park and lo and behold, all those people had come around the lake and got there first and they wanted Jesus to tell them more about God's love and they wanted to, him to answer all their questions. Now, I can imagine that Jesus was pretty tired and maybe he was frustrated by all those people asking him for things, but he patiently and kindly told them about God's love and he answered their questions. And a little later, they got on the boat again and the same thing happened when they got off the boat. Here were a whole bunch of people and they wanted him to heal their friends and their family members. And although Jesus was still tired, he did what they asked. He let them bring their sick friends and relatives and he took care of them, even though he was even more tired than before. When we read the Bible and, and the stories about Jesus, it's nice that Jesus doesn't just tell us what to do. He shows us what he wants us to do. This story shows us it's important to try to be patient and kind, even when we're tired and even when it's hard. That's because that's what Jesus wants us to do. We want, he wants us to follow him. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we love you and we want to be patient and kind like you. Please help us and forgive us when we forget. Amen. 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 very definition of this word is a figure of speech that conveys the opposite of what is being said. You'll find so much of this in our very own ways of life, whether you're planning the simple outing outside and it begins to go down and down for. <laughs> You'll find irony in the Bible as well, especially in the Old Testament, but it isn't always quite as obvious. Sometimes you have to dive in deep and look for it, which is our case for Jeremiah. In this reading, God is denouncing those who have been leaving Judah. It is you who have scattered my flock, says the Lord, and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. This Im imagery is very interesting because, and it's very ironic, because shepherds were not exactly high in the social order at that time. Nobody was really going to be inviting a shepherd to a party or a feast, and it requires no education to become a shepherd, just your own willingness to spend time with the animals instead of people. More often than not, those sheep that they are tending to, probably, they probably didn't own them. They're most likely owned by other people with money. But it doesn't have time or the energy to do the dirty work. Yet they are in fact responsible for taking care of one of the most valued forms of life. Sheep was a major source of their agricult agricultural, oh my goodness, economy. <laughs> that. And in order for the economy to flourish, the shepherds had to do a good job looking after the sheep and have integrity to do so. What really shows the irony in this is that a shepherd is a common image for a king, a lowly profession as a shepherd is compared to a king. To make this even more confusing, it is also a common image for God. Jeremiah paints a lovely picture of a loving and stubborn God who seeks for his people, like a shepherd searching for his lost sheep. God corrals us and brings us home to him. And that is a pastoral image of God. 
One of the most endearing images of God in scripture is that a loving and caring shepherd who leaves his flock and watches over them, keeping them out of harm's way and leads them to still waters. In Psalm 23, to me, when I read it, it reminds me of a promise. By saying the words that we put our faith in God who loves and cares for us, so that he will plead us beside still waters to life eternal. It is a beautiful promise to me that can be overlooked. Usually when I hear this psalm, it's during funerals as a way to help us grieve. grieve. So we don't feel like the lost sheep without a shepherd who has to fend for themselves in a pasture that is not their own, full of thorns and dangers, nothing like the lush greens that we are accustomed to. I myself have felt like a lost sheep searching for God. When I first left home and started my first year of college in September of 2019, I have Warburg for not sponsoring it. <laughs> um, I felt alone and missed my hometown and everything I was used to. And one of my friends that I met the summer previous, we kept in touch. She was also a fellow religion major. We met outside her dorm room one night, building at 11 p.m. on a Thursday, like any college student who does not every time in the world. And we talked about her life our fears, and somehow death. Her brother passed away from cancer two years prior before she graduated and she lost touch with God. She couldn't believe why this happened and she told me she felt ashamed and fake because of being a religion major and not really having faith in God and almost hating him. I never quite had an experience like that, but I told her that the doubt she feels makes her human. Believing in God is a way for us to be comforted and not feel alone. It is a way for us to know that even though I am scared of death and what's going to happen, I have something to look forward to. Heaven, eternal life. A place where earthly struggle and pain isn't there. The prophet Jeremiah is the bearer of bad news. He has the task of telling God's people what is going to happen and why. And in the last couple of verses in our reading, we've got a glimmer of hope that things are going to get better. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, and I will raise up for David a righteous branch. Our God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our very own shepherd comes down and takes us by the hand, shepherd us to still waters to show God's kingdom, to lead us back to the field of lush greens where we have lost our way. God is a good shepherd who watches over you, and guides you through the shadows and valleys of life of death. I don't know about you, but to me, there is no irony in a promise like that. We'll continue with the hymn of the day, 713. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers, I will end each petition with the, Hear us, O God. Your response is, Your mercy is great. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers to the Church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in the proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from national, natural disasters and protect coastlines threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O oh God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill, especially. Al, Liz, Carol, Dolores, Delbert, Tom, Janie, Mary, Kay, Kathy, Ron, Jim, Joan, Matt, Bob, Thomas, John, Terry, Joyce, Caitlin, Wayne, the family of Lee Hardell, Leo Hardell, and all of COVID-19. For medical researchers, hospital personnel, doctors and nurses, especially Deb, Holly, Joy, Kara, Taylor, Lily, Olivia, Ta, Reese, and Bonnie. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another. And revitalize our ministries of feeding and nourishing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, now hear the prayers and concerns of your people. Bring me this home, O oh God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you receive them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these prayer, all these prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of our saving love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray the offering prayer. We pray, Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, we give you praise and thanksgiving. We are the product of your creativity, made in your image to be like you. When we rebelled against you and denied our true selves, you stepped into our flesh and endured the cross so we could come home to you. Amen. We remember how all things were made new. On the night before he died, Jesus took a loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Remember me whenever you eat. This is my body given for you. When supper was finished, Jesus took the cup of wine, blessed it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Remember me whenever you drink. This is my blood shed for you. With thanksgiving, we eat and drink. With joy, we remember. With Christ's inclusive love, we gather around his table of grace and mercy. And with hope, we pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Reminder that there's two seals on your all-in-one communion. The, the plastic one with the little purple design is for the wafer. So you can open that. The body of Christ given for you. And then the foil seal is for the grape juice. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Now to the singing song from 723.
Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.